Hello again, welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name is Graham, this is X-Plane and the Hot Start Challenger 650. This is part 2 of the Tutorial Flight video series. In the previous video, we started the aircraft APU up, did some basic familiarization in the cockpit, and in this video, we're going to complete the cockpit preparation and get the aircraft up to the point where we're ready to start the engines. We're on standstill, the refueling is still happening, the chocks are in and the gear pins are in, but all the covers are off as you saw in the previous video. The previous video was fairly early on in the life of the product and it didn't have the gear pins. We'll look at the gear pins in this video. Let's hop on board and sit in the seat here. So, we've done the checklist from the tablet. We've got the APU up and running. The next thing we're going to do is run through the, the full cockpit preparation. So as in the previous video, to make that a bit easier, I'm going to pop out the multifunction display, the CDU, the DCP and the CCP. The checklists, when we call for them, will be on the uh, number two MFD here. It's important to understand that if you're using the first officer checklist function, that you use the uh, checklist control here, check item, uh, skip item, and I've got a joystick binding for that. You can drive the checklist on the MFD through the DCP and CCP, um, but it's easier to use the, if you're using the first officer, just to use those key bindings. So let's just ask for the first item. Flight compartment checklist, AC and DC electrics. You'll notice that I've got the hint images turned on, and I strongly recommend that as you're learning the aircraft, you leave the hint images turned on. These tell you exactly what to do. So we're looking to check the AC and the DC systems. AC system here, we can see that it's running on the APU gen. We've got the util buses are shed as we expect. That's what the picture shows here as well. The frequency and voltage is good. We'll have a look on the DC system as well. You see the DC utility buses are shed. Everything makes sense. So we just check and move on to the next item. It's a read and do process. So we check every item uh, as we do it. We don't do a procedure and then a check at this part. So just read the checklist and do the items. Check. Nav lights, logo light. Up here, the nav lights, we'll turn those on and the logo lights on. You have the option to turn off the uh, audio response. So if you'd like to read the, the response yourself, you can do that. On, cockpit lights. It's daytime, so that's fine. Set. Lamp test. Now you see this symbol here, the symbol that uh, looks like a little bit like the sun. That's an indication that the test is only relevant on the first flight of the day. So if you see this symbol and you're doing a second flight, you don't have to worry about it. The lamp test, it's down here. You've got a hold in position one and a hold in position two. I've got key bindings to let me do that so that I can look at all the rest of the, the screen as we do that. So. Lamp test one, we can see the lights are on. You can see we've got the, the left-hand side indications on the FCP and on the overhead. Switch two, it's the same, the right-hand side and all the lights are on as expected. Checked. Tested. Duct monitor. So the duct monitor, again, that's a first light of the day item. It's asking us to check for warning messages. We can make this a little bit easier by stacking the CAS system here. If I click CAS, it will hide all of the messages apart from the really serious ones, and it'll only show changes. So I've stacked the CAS, then coming up here, we'll hold the bleed air duct monitor switch in the test position, listen for the annunciator, and check the warning messages. So we get all the messages that we're expecting. We'll test loop A, loop A test OK, and loop B, loop B test OK. Test Next. FMS database status. OK, so the important thing to understand about the FMS on this aircraft is it actually genuinely has two navigation databases. If I go into status here, you can see my 1st of February 2018 and April 2022. This is stock X-Plane database, and the lower one is the custom updated uh, nav data from Navigraph. 
you always cycle the databases on this aircraft when you set it up to make sure that everything in the FMS is cleared out. So even if I had the correct database selected, I would still cycle it to the old database and then the new database. We just click the secondary and then click it into the active. And again, it tells you everything you need to do on the hint images here. Cycled, checked. FMS flight plan uplink, it is. So my flight plan is going to come from Simbrief today. I'm going to go to Index, Root Menu, Flight Plan Recall. And in my case, I'm going to go from CYUL and we're going to go to EGPF. I've already created the flight plan in Simbrief. You can put the FIN number in and request it that way if you'd prefer. Not interested in the ATIS or the... Uh, the other information at the moment. Initiated. Anti-skid. So anti-skid, we're going to check that it's armed and push the test button. See anti-skid in test on the CAS up here. Armed, tested. Nose door. So we're going to power up the hydraulics as we do the next item here. We want to make sure that the nose gear is not, uh, there's nobody working around the nose gear because if the switch has been left in the wrong position, the door is going to move. So the nose gear is clear. We do this with our other crew member being outside checking on it for us. Clear. Hydraulic 3A pump. So the 3A pump. 3A is here. We switch it to on. You see it powers up the central hydraulic system here. On. Brake pressure. We're looking for 3000 PSI on the brakes. Checked. Parking brake. So I'm going to set the parking brake. And to do this, I have to hold the tow brakes and then I can use the parking brake. And then I can release the tow brakes. That's the parking brake set. If I tried to set it without holding the tow brakes, the parking brake wouldn't work. Set. Nose door. So it's looking for the nose door to be closed. But what we're going to do is use this opportunity to pop outside and take those pins out because we need to be able to open the door and close the door to get the, the pins out. There will be some additional pins coming in a future update uh, for the air driven generator. But at the moment, we'll open the switch here beside where the AC power goes in. Making sure the door is clear, flick the switch and make sure that the pins are out. And with that, we'll close the nose gear door. Let's close it. And while I'm doing that, because I'm thinking about the same thing, as we'll come around here, I'll take the other pins out of the gear as well. You notice that I can do a touch test on the wing as well to see if there's any ice on the wing. That's a, a an addition after the release of the product, just to make sure that you're not taking off with, with ice. Because obviously in real life, you'd be able to feel for ice and you can do exactly the same on the Hotstar aircraft. Right, so I've got the pins out. Still got the chocks in, but that's okay. Back into the seat. So the item we were dealing with was nose door, and that's closed. So we've used that as a trigger to take the pins out as well. Closed. Hydraulic panel and pumps. So what we're going to do is switch all of the pumps on and make sure the respective hydraulic systems power up. So what I'm going to do is take the 3A pump and switch it off and then put 3B on and make sure the 3B pump also runs the number three hydraulic system. And then we'll switch one and two B pumps on and make sure all the systems are powered. They all come up to pressure. So I'll go back to auto, 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 and then on. So now the three number three hydraulic system remains powered. The other systems, the pressure will bleed off as we go. And we've got the messages back again because the pressure dropped off. Checked. Auto. 3A on. Electric panel. It's getting a bit more logical now. We'll work through it in a kind of top to bottom, left to right manner. So AC Gen 1 and Gen 2 are off. Checked. AC DC utility switch. We'll switch that out to come on. And if you'll notice, we've now got the utility bus 1 and 2 and utility bus 1 and 2 AC and DC. On. Start ignition panel. That's up here. Just check all the switches are out. Checked. Fuel panel. So this is an interesting one. This is the double smiley check. It's an interesting fuel system on the Challenger. We're going to flick the switches on 
and then go around again. I switch this pump on and you'll see both pumps come on. That's as expected. I then open left to aux, which comes on. Cross flow gravity, which opens right to aux. That has the effect of putting this light out, so that's expected. I then put the right pump on and left pump off. Make sure they're still green. Left uh, aux comes out. That should free up the interlock between them, allows this one to come on, and then off, off, and off. Back to as we had before. It's all detailed in here, but basically you go round once and round twice. There's an interlock to make sure you can't drain left to aux and right to aux simultaneously, and that's what you're checking. Checked. APU LCV. LCV open. Open. Tenth stage isolation valve. That's open. open. Packs. We'll put both packs on. And you can hear the airflow as well. On. Air conditioning panel. So air conditioning, we've got normal settings on here. Cabin temperature is in the control of the cabin, and that's as expected. The ram air valve is covered. Checked. Pressurization panel. So we'll check that the man rate uh, control is wound down. We'll check that the man alt uh, the cherry switch here is in the middle. Make sure the landing uh, altitude is set, the barrow settings correct, and the rate index here is on the pip. We can go into contingency, uh, pressurization, goes manual, and then as we go back to auto, you'll see the fault light illuminate momentarily. That's checked. Checked, set. Bleed air panel. So bleed air, it looks at the moment like it's supposed to look. We've got the 14 stage all selected out and the middle two switches here are in. That's fine. Checked. Supplemental ground wing anti-ice panel switch. So this is a later addition to the Challenger. We need to make sure that these switches are, basically make sure it's set in the correct uh, position. So the test switch is uh, not set. Lights are off. Out. Cal anti-ice switches. So we're going to push these switches in and make sure the messages don't appear. So both in. Give it a second, see if the messages appear. And both out again. That's fine. On or off. Anti-ice panel. So wing. Wing anti-ice is set off. The left and right heat lights are extinguished. The cowl switches are pressed out. And then we're going to move the windshield switches to high and then test it. I can move them individually by dragging. There's a collective switch here. So click and test. We've got Window, window, windshield, windshield. That's correct. And then we'll go back to off. Ice. We'll put it in the debt position. See, we get the ice check there. And then when I go to wing, I should get a message saying wing overheat and the red message and the green message. Let's just stack the cast again to make that clearer. Here we go. So we get the wing anti-ice test OK and wing overheat. That's fine. Checked. Tested. Emergency lights. So emergency lights, we are going to flick the switch again. We need to double check this. So you see we've got emergency lights set to off. If I change the switch to on, you'll see I get advisory that says emergency lights on. And then I go to arm. And the warning message goes away. So that's checked. Checked. Armed. Passenger signs. Uh, we are still feeling, but we know there's no passengers on board, so let's go on and on. On or auto. ELT. That's set to armed. Armed. Glare shield panel. So you see for the overhead, we've done basically a full flow, top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom, and then sweep across. The glare shield panel, there's not really much to do. Uh, I see I've got a fail message on the auto thrust, so I'll click the ATS disconnect button. Um, I've got a binding for that, just to make the fail message go away. We'll cancel the master caution. And the only thing they really do on this is the autopilot disconnect bar here. This is like a uh, the last resort disconnect, if you like. We'll just exercise that to make sure it moves and it's not stuck because it never gets used on the real aircraft. So that's checked. Checked. Crew and passenger oxygen. So I'll check my oxygen system on the left-hand side. Make sure it works. And on the right-hand side, the same thing. We'd hope at this point the other pilot is back from doing their walk around. Refueling is complete, Captain. Do you need anything else? Uh, let's see. Before we get involved in that, we needed 8.2 tons and we've got 8.5. Yes, that's perfect. 
you can go ahead and disconnect. That's a lot of money. Done. Here's a copy for your records. Have a nice day. So we'll use that as a trigger to come up here and reset the fueling system. So make sure the switches are all off and switched off. Excellent. Right, back in the seat. So we're doing the oxygen check. We've done the, the masks. I want to make sure the passenger oxygen is set to normal and therapeutic oxygen is set to normal. That's fine. Checked on. DCU warning panel. They're set correctly. Checked. CVR. Push and hold. Five seconds. Make sure the light comes on. Done. Tested. Audio panels. So on my aircraft, I have the audio panels uh, set to, to mirror. So if I momentarily select the number two system off, you can see it happens over here as well. And if I put it on there, it happens here. It doesn't have to be like that. You can have it set uh, independently. And when the aircraft is fully compatible with shared flight, you can, you'll can you hear different settings on this side than you will hear on this side. So it's, it's set up for multi-pilot operation from the outset. What we're interested in though is that the auto panel is set correctly. Most importantly, if you intend to use the refueling system or speak to the ground crew on the headset, make sure you've got the uh, intercom service set here. Um, if you're using de-icing, you'll need to have the transmit selector here set to VHF1 or VHF2 as required. That's fine. That's checked. Set. SPS system. So the stall protection system is an interesting one. Let's bring these displays back up and I'll put the flight controls on. The Challenger doesn't have um, controls that have any uh, feel to them from the aerodynamic surfaces. All the feel on the controls are provided by springs. It is basically a big version of the Airbus side stick here. What we need to do before you run the stall protection test is put the stab trim channel 1 on and then I'm going to motor the trim forwards. So I'm going to move the trim all the way nose down. See I can hold it here or I can do it on my joystick binding. So put the trim all the way forward and then click the button to disconnect the trim again. So now what I'm going to do is do the stall protection test itself. This is a bit harder to do when you've got uh, just a screen to do it on, so we'll do an abridged version of it. I'm going to click the hotspot here between the SPS switches left and right, and I'm going to make sure that I get the ignition, the stall fail message. Let's clear the cast again. Ignition, stall fail, and we'll check that the stall uh, shaker and the stick pusher operate. Here we go. Stall fail, ignition, stick pusher. We can see the elevator deviation on the flight control page. I've also got another binding here for the G switch that uh, basically releases some of the pressure. I'm going to click the autopilot disconnect button and make sure that gives me full control to override the pusher. And on the other side, click the button here and make sure I can override the pusher. That's the check complete. Right, next item. Checked on. Integrated standby instrument. That's here. We've got it set to uh, inches of mercury, which is fine. Checked, set. Clock. That's UTC. That's perfect. Everybody flies with it on UTC. Um, it, it has a local mode, but it's not smart. It doesn't know the, the actual local time zone. It's just a fixed offset. So nobody ever bothers moving it from UTC. Reset. EFIS, ICAS. And again, that's thinking more about the configuration setting you've got on the on the aircraft here. So are you in the correct altimeter units that you're interested in for this flight? Is everything else looking reasonable on the, the screen? Have you got the right frequencies or the, the next frequencies set up here? We're not going to do anything with the flight plan at the moment. This is just making sure that the EFIS options are set correctly for how you prefer to operate the aircraft. Checked. Main line of gear bay overheat. And you can see that we're still following that pattern. So we've done the side panels, the uh, SPS, and then we've done the screens in the middle. Right, main landing gear overheat. So we're down into the center here. You might be wondering why I've got a separate switch overheat. for overheat and fail when the other switches have got two positions. I don't know the answer. That's a Bombardier thing. Checked. TAS warning switches. TAS warning switches are here. Make sure that they are 
uh, all covered and on and put it to test and make sure that we get the indications on the display. Excellent. We'll let it continue working on that. We'll go to the next item. Out tested. Pitch and roll disconnects. Pitch and roll disconnects. These are these items here. Um, I encourage you to play with those during your flight and see what happens. Remember, you can change seats to operate the different controls on different sides. But at the moment, we're just checking these pins are in. If you pull the pins out, it disconnects the two separate sides of the aircraft. In stowed. Ground spoilers. So ground spoilers. What's it asking for here? It just wants to check the ground spoilers are set to auto, which they are. Auto. Thrust reversers. We're going to check the emergency stow switches are out and then switch the reversers to armed. You have to arm the thrust reversers on the Challenger and you tend to disarm them in flight. Checked. Armed. Thrust levers. So what I'm going to do is move the thrust levers out of shut off into idle to verify I've got control over the levers. So click the red paddle, push it forward to idle and then using my hardware throttle, make sure I've got a full range of motion and then back to idle. Same with the other side. This is a mechanical connection. There's a cable between this and the engine fuel control units. So move it slowly and deliberately and make sure you've got full motion of the thing. Checked, shut off. Engine speed switches. Engine speed switches, we're into the center of the panel now. Make sure there's a switch on and on. On. Engine vibration check. So the vibration test is here. We're going to look for a vibe going up to 3.5. Here we go. See the vibration indicator comes on, vibration, vibration, and 3.5. Checked. Tested. Oral warning. So the Challenger has an interesting oral warning system. We've got two separate banks giving the same thing. So the DCUs over here. You've got the left side and the right side are the one and two. So we'll check uh, system number one. And we could let it go through all the noises it makes if you really want to. And we can run system two. You can actually run them both together. So one, two. And then switch them both off again. Checked. Checked. Smoke detector. So that's down here. Click and test. Smoke. Smoke toilet, smoke, smoke. baggage bay, and the smoke warning. Smoke. Test it. Trims, mock trim. This is a fairly involved little test here. The Challenger, uh, as you can see, has got no trim wheel. We've got switches for the aileron and the rudder trim, and we've got flight control switches for the uh, pitch trim, but there's no trim wheel. So we have to make sure that the electric trim is operating as we'd expect it to do. There's two channels. So first thing, I'm going to switch on channel one and the Mach trim. Then what I'm going to do is use my, key, my uh, joystick binding here to move the pitch trim. Now, the joystick binding will follow the seat that you sit in. If you use the standard X-plane pitch up, pitch down trim commands, it will operate the left-hand side trim when you sit in the left-hand seat. If you see I move my switch here, nothing happens. But if I change seats, I can now move it on this side. So channel one is selected on. I'm going to hold it in up and move until I get full range of motion. You can see I've got stab channel two in up and initiated both in the CAS and the flight control page. So I want to make sure that I've moved it from full nose down to full nose up. And then I have to move it down and keep moving it until I get the tone. Having done that, I move to the other side and then check that the right hand stick can also control channel one. So make sure it's full down or move it until I get the tone and then nose up. And then I'm going to push the disconnect on the right hand side and make sure that the trim doesn't move. Perfect. Then I'm going to repeat the exercise. I'm going to put stab trim channel two in and mark trim and then repeat. So nose down, nose up. So we're basically checking both sides with both channels. And when it's time to disconnect, I want to disconnect with the offside switch. So if I'm using channel two, I test the left-hand side. If I'm using channel one, I check the disconnect on the right-hand side. Having done that, we'll put all of the trims on. 
If you want to shortcut the check, just put all three switches on and you're good to go. We also have to check the aileron and the rudder trim. I've got key bindings for these, so aileron and rudder. You can see they're both moving. We'd move them both to the limit on both sides. So make sure that we've got full left uh, aileron, full left rudder, and then go the other way. I'm not going to waste your time showing it going uh, both uh, left and right. I'll put it back to the middle and be done with it there. Or approximately in the middle. I would encourage you to do at least half of the check because having the trim not quite centralized is a very real thing to experience. That's the trim check set. Tested, set. Yacht ampers. Again, yacht amper is very like the trims. There's two yacht ampers. I put number one on and you can see we'll get a warning for channel two in op, then channel two and the warning disappears. So we've checked both channels are working and if we unclear the cast, make sure there's no yacht amper showing on here. You can see the message list gets shorter as we work through this. Engaged. Reversionary inhibit switches. So these are for abnormal cases, typically. Make sure the inhibit switches are not pushed and make sure that the display selectors are set appropriately. Norm out. IRS. So what we're looking for on the IRS here is just to make sure that they are all in a good state. So index, uh, position, let me double check. There we go. IRS number one. It's, it's nearly there, it's coming up. IRS2 and IRS3 looking fairly reasonable. It must have done a, a temporary realign as I've been sitting here, but in two minutes it'll be good. So that's okay. Aligned. CPDLC. I'm not going to use CPDLC on this flight, Log so that's on. fine. TCAS. TCAS, we go onto the uh, transponder page here. You see we've got a transponder test. Uh, TCAS test. See so the target showing. The green bar. TCAS system test OK. I'm also going to make sure that my transponder ident is set correctly. This aircraft is fresh out of the factory, so I need to put to my uh, either my call sign or my registration into the flight ID. That's done. Tested. ATIS and clearance. Well, that's not relevant at the moment. We do that if we're flying online. Copied. FMS flight plan, wind update, perf. So this is the, the meaty part of the setup, if you like. So I need to, first of all, get the flight plan from the uh, data link into the system. So looking at my flight plan page here, if I look at the secondary plan, I can simply activate the secondary plan and execute. So I've now got a secondary flight plan that's been activated. The flight plan came from the data link, and as we step through it, we can see it's got the routing that I wanted. We'll have a look at how we review that in a second. I want to set it up for the departure as well. So at the departure, we're going to have the departure off runway uh, 24 left, and it's going to be the departure number one here, and execute. If I go to legs, that should just basically be runway heading, and then vectors, and then a discontinuity, and then rabbit. Perfect. Captain, it's Jenny from Hot Start Flight Support. Your passengers have arrived. Shall I have them brought to the plane? Let's tell Jenny we're still working on it. Understood. Just call me when you're ready to receive them. Excellent, Anything thank you. Else? Nope, that's all good, thank you. Always a pleasure. Take care. Excellent. So we're nearly there. Flight plan. Uh, we need to load the arrival as well. So it'll be the arrival into uh, Glasgow on ILS runway 23, and I think it's the, the black arrival, I said. So we'll execute that. If I want to review the flight plan, what I can do is take the second, uh, the lower MFD here. If I change the lower format into uh, plan, I can then go to MFD advance on here, and that lets me step through the waypoints. So let's see what we've got. I need to open the range up a little bit here. So this is the very end. There we go. So skipping through, we got runway heading out, and then we got Rabic. 
Hopefully it takes us out roughly the right direction. Out on the Oceanic Transitions, Limery, Blackhead, Kerpa. Excellent. That all looks reasonable. So let's take it back into the correct format. We'll put it from Plan Mode into PPOS. So it was FMS Flight Plan, Wind Update and Perf. So we can get the winds as well. It's Index, Rick Menu, Flight Plan Wind Update, Send. And that will send off for data link winds. And on the perf, it's not looking for the takeoff performance at this point. It's looking for the uh, information for the VNAV setup and that sort of thing. So we'll tell it the temperature. I'll go to the perf init. I'll tell it that we're going to cruise, uh, what do we think? Initially flight level, let's say if we can make 370, flight level 370 initially. And I'm expecting four passengers of around 85 kilograms. There's no fuel loaded on there. The fuel's had a chance to stabilize. So let's click the clear button here and we'll get the sensed fuel. That's correct. And we'll execute that. We'll also look at VNAV and make sure the speeds are appropriate. So 250 knots. 250 knots seems a touch on the slow side for the climb. So let's change that to something a bit, uh, a bit faster. Let's say I want to do a 275 knot climb or 0.77. That's better. Next, cruising, 300.8, that's perfect. And descent, again, that's a bit on the slow side. So let's say we do the initial descent at 0.8 or 300. There's no point in flying slowly in the descent on this aircraft. Excellent. So we've done the FMS flight plan, the wind update, and the perf. Programmed. Takeoff data. So takeoff data, this is where we look at the runway and make sure the takeoff performance is set. Let's look at the perf menu again. Perf, perf, takeoff. From way two, four left. Anything that's got a square box we need to fill in. Anything that is dashed, we can optionally fill it in. I know that the wind here is 230, around about eight knots. So let's fill that in. If I want it to be in feet, I can put an F in here or M for meters. We've got the wind component here and the slope and whether or not we want to use APR. That's fine. So next page, central gravity trim. We don't need to worry about that. We can leave that well alone just now. It's, it's not something that's relevant in the current simulation of the aircraft. We'll just use our trim around about five and a half to six degrees and that'll be fine. So leave that blank and click send and it'll transfer the speeds over to the MFD. It's a good cue as well. You can see the, the next few items are going to be avionics chart and flight instruments. So let's set the takeoff data accordingly. So the first thing I want to do is to make sure I set my speed. I'll pop this out so you can see it. I'm going to set my speed to 200 knots. My final takeoff speed is 175. We'd always set 200 just to be clear on there. The runway heading is 237. So I'll put that on the heading bug as well. Two, three, seven. And altitude, well, we need to get that from the, the charts, which is the next item. Set. Avionics and charts. So let's have a look at the chart function. I'll use the right hand side and the DCP down here. So if I select uh, chart initially, I've got a Navigraph subscription, so it'll load them from Navigraph. You can see that we've got the the chart loaded just now. Runway two four left is where I'm going to depart from. But um we also need to choose the the chart that we're looking at. I can never remember which button it is for this. Lower menu. There we go. And there's the Montreal departure. So the outer dial scrolls through them and just push to select. So Montreal departure, 237. Do we have an altitude? Let's have a look. One of the little shortcuts we've got is normally you'd move this around using the zoom in and zoom out. Um, using the, the joystick here. That's not super convenient for simulation. So you've got a mouse wheel and on the 2D panel, you should be able to click and drag as well with the right mouse button here. So jet aircraft, uh, unless otherwise assigned, jet aircraft maintain 5,000 feet. And the initial climb off runway 24, it's climb heading 237 and as assigned. So the charts are set. We'll turn the chart back off again. In fact, we'll go to our previous, I can never remember the button. There we go. We'll go to the previous chart and uh, there we go. 
right charts off and let's set that 5000. I'll trade here. Excellent. So it's asking for avionics and charts. We've got the chart selected, now the avionics. So I want my uh, PFD to be in rose mode. That's my preferred way of flying it. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you do it consistently. PFD is in rose mode. My uh, MFD, we're going to make sure that is in PPAWS. Right hand side, uh, I quite like the right hand side being in plan mode. So let's have the lower format in plan and uh, we need the right hand side BCP here as well. We're going to set this one to rose mode as well. Perfect. That's done. Uh, we've got a modification that I should have executed as well. It's reminding me off there. That's done. So that's the layout that I've got and we've got the chart selected. Set. Flight instruments. And this is the final check of the flight instruments to make sure you've set everything appropriately. Let's see what we've got. So I'm going to click the TOGA button. The auto thrust isn't on, the engines aren't on. So all TOGA does is give me the correct flight directors. I've got takeoff and takeoff. I'm going to use nav mode. And then we're going to double check what we've got set up on the screen here. And it's like a logical flow. You can see it kind of written out here and a descriptive format here. But basically the horizon's aligned. We've got a heading of 149 and that looks sensible for the runway. We've got an initial track of 237. The FMS-1 is navigating on a direct track of 237 with the waypoint 520 feet. We've got speeds V1, 134, 139, 146. VT is 175. Target speed 200 knots. We've got takeoff, takeoff for the flight directors with LNAV and ALS armed. ALT capture for 5,000 feet. The VVI is not moving. And we've got takeoff uh, 90.3 N1. So... The flight instruments are checked. Checked and set. Departure briefing. Well, that's basically the briefing done. Completed. Emergency procedures. We'll survive. Reviewed. Pins, covers, chocks. So if you hadn't taken the pins out, this would be a time to do it. We've got some chocks still in, but to be honest, that's not too bad. We can live with that. What I'll do is we'll take out the rear two chocks here. I'm going to leave the front chalk in because we're going to start the aircraft on stand and the ground crew will deal with that chalk for us. Removed. Cabin lights, water heaters, master seat. That's all fine. Set. Flight compartment checklist complete. Excellent. Engine start checklist next. So that's the flight compartment checklist done. All we'll do is we'll call Jenny. We'll get the passengers out and we'll get ready to go. We should be off in the next 10 minutes or so. And we'll do most of that in the next video. As always, if you do have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Not the most interesting of video because we're looking at the systems uh, a test on the aircraft, but just remember, if you really want to do this quickly, make sure that the uh, APU bleed LCV isolation valve switched on. Make sure that your trims are on, your yaw dampers on, and the thrust reverse is armed. Basically anything on here that looks out of place, make sure you switch it until it's correct. We'll start the engines up and get flying in the next video, and I hope you'll join me for that. Thanks very much.